Hi, welcome to Missouri Outdoors. This is our special all kids edition, Just Kidding Around. We're gonna follow some kids challenging themselves on a shooting course. And we're gonna meet some of the strangest critters that you've ever seen. Plus, we're gonna get a few tips from a Missouri Department of Conservation photographer on how to truly capture Missouri outdoors on film. But first, let's test your nature knowledge. Almost all sounds seem scarier at night, but knowing more about the creatures around you can help. Let's say you're out at night, it's very dark, you hear a crash and this sound. Who is your nighttime prowler? It could be a river otter, a squirrel, a bobcat, or a raccoon. The sound in the dark made you jump, but is it something to be afraid of? It's a raccoon, and you don't need to be afraid. He probably just knocked over your garbage can looking for a free meal. Stay tuned. We've got some great pictures coming up. Well, I think. We now return to more of Just Kidding Around. Okay, so here's a thought on making your own photographic masterpieces. When framing up your subject, try putting it either on the right or the left sides of the frame. Sometimes putting things in the middle can get a little boring, but nothing's boring about this next adventure. Okay guys, say cheese! So what we want to do this morning, I think, is we'll probably shoot a little bit of skeet, we'll shoot a little bit of trap, and then we'll play around with some sporting clays. We're real picky out here at Cedar Creek Rod and Gun Club about being safe with a firearm. So we'll wear safety glasses and we'll wear earplugs. Always make sure that muzzle is pointed in a safe direction. We never load the firearm until we're ready to shoot and in our position on a station. So I was about eight when, they, when I tried my first gun, you know. I wasn't nervous at all. It was a pellet gun and my dad was helping me at my great aunt's farm. That feel kind of semi comfortable. All right. Uh, I've shot a few times and shooting trap, and I've shot a 22. So, how does that feel? Feels good. First of all, let's take a look at some skeet targets and see how this game works. Yeah. Let's get your guns and see if we can make it happen. When you're ready, you just say pull. Pull. All right. Kind of shocked me a little bit. <laughs> pull. Hey. Now, did that kick you very bad? You want to try one more? Don't want to try another one? All right. Give me another shooter. Pull. Now. What you did, you saw the target come out and then you jumped way in front of it. Pull. All right, you broke that target. That's a hit. You got it off the back edge. I want you to increase that lead just a quarter of an inch. And then you'll hit that sucker dead center. I shot a little bit of um, skeet and trap. And then I've shot at still targets with rifles, but hardly ever shot shotgun. You call pull whenever you're ready. Pull. <laughs> you were about that far, too far in front of it. Pull. Now that time you were behind it. Pull. Absolute smoke. Good job. The longest river completely inside the state is the Gasconade. The river winds nearly 300 miles from its source near Hartville to the Missouri River. As a crow flies, it's only about 120 miles. Being a kid is not easy. Some people say we're slackers, apathetic, 
that we don't care about anything. Others say the world is a mess and my generation isn't up to the challenge of cleaning it up. Those people are wrong. Still waiting for a few people with their eyes up here. We spend a lot of time in class talking about stuff. The ozone layer, saving the whales. We're all concerned about the environment. I mean, like we've got to live here for a long time, right? We wanted something we could do. Our teacher, Mrs. Loudenschlager, said we should talk to the Household Hazardous Waste Project in Springfield, Missouri. They have this program where you paint dump no waste drains to stream on the storm drains to keep people from dumping their stuff. She said these drains go right into our streams and rivers. If we could let people know that, we could help save our streams. Our date with the paint has arrived. The buses are loaded, teams divided, safety gear is put on. Some of us help out to notify the locals. Another group set out to paint some drains. Then we swept the area we were going to paint, laid down the stencil, dabbed a little paint, and it was done. We left our mark for the environment, and guess what? It was fun! One of the strangest creatures to be found in an Ozark stream is the hellbender. This aquatic salamander spends its life under rocks in riffles of swift, clear-flowing streams. It's a long-lived animal, some reaching upwards of 50 years in age. Although their appearance can be frightful, hellbenders are quite harmless. It's the only species of its kind in North America, and it lives only in southern Missouri and a small portion of Arkansas. While population numbers have declined in Arkansas, a recent survey showed hellbender populations in Missouri are stable. When the black raspberries are ripe, take the kids berry picking and reward them with a treat they can make themselves. We're making wild purple muffins and they're easy. First, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Or if you're too young, ask your mom to do it. Stir together flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt in a bowl, forming a well in the center. Mix egg, milk, honey, yogurt, and oil. And dump that into the flour mixture. Stir until moist. Then mix in crushed black raspberries. Pour the batter into lined muffin tins to two-thirds full. Bake 20 to 25 minutes. When they're cool, pour yourself a cup of coffee or a big glass of cold milk and enjoy. It almost makes a chigger bites worth it. Next time I'll remember the bug spray. If you'd like the recipe, just write to us. We'll have the address for you at the end of the show. Shh. We're waiting for something to go by. A deer, a squirrel, anything. Do you know what's one of the most important things about wildlife photography? Patience. And maybe a more comfortable seat. This might take a while. Why don't you guys go test your nature knowledge with Ralph Duran? In the past few years, a lot of stories have been told of cougars being spotted in Missouri. But we're not sure if they're wild cougars or captive animals that have escaped their owners. Cats are secretive and cougars are cats. So instead of keeping your eyes open and hoping to see one, keep your ears open and maybe you'll hear one. You've probably heard this noise in the movies, but if you hear it in Missouri, we want to know about it. Here's another quick photo tip. Make sure you look closely at the background in your shots. You might be getting more than you bargained for. More Just Kidding Around coming up. Missouri Outdoors special presentation of Just Kidding Around now continues. We're here with Cliff White, a photographer for the Missouri Department of Conservation. He takes some of the great photos in the Missouri Conservationist magazine. The most important thing in photography is light, because without light, you know, you don't have a picture, because that's, that's what illuminates everything in your picture, it was creates light and shallow, and, and it's what creates color. So light is the most important thing, and one thing that photographers really pay attention to is the quality of that light. You might see a lot of photographers are out in the morning or out in the afternoon because the quality of light at that time of day is really good because the sun is kind of low in the sky, it's casting some neat shadows on things and it's really bringing out some colors and some nice warm light. Let's see how Garrett, Elena and Allison are doing on the shooting course. We're going to be shooting some trap targets now 
and trap targets are going to differ from mesquite targets in that we're going to be shooting targets generally going away from us. Let's see if we can break one of those. What do you say? Still high. Nice job. Good job. That's dead center. Hello. Good job. You want to try another one? Get that head down. There you pull. Pull. Oh, I jerked that one off. Yep. Come up here and try one with me. Pull. You want to try one more? Oh. Ooh, we jumped him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See, when she calls pull, within the next half hour, go ahead and push that button. Pull. <laughs> Five on that one. Right. Yeah. You think we ought to go try some sporting clays? Sure. See what that game's all about? Let's go give her a try. The first Missouri stream teams were organized in 1988. After 10 years, there are more than 1,000 stream teams in the state. A lot of people think that, for instance, if they were to go up to a wolf enclosure, that the wolves are going to run up to the fence and attack them just like many backyard dogs would. They're really surprised to find out that they're much more reticent and much more shy. When you come face to face with this elusive animal, it's impossible to picture the big bad wolf of fairy tale fame. Today, it's a species struggling to avoid extinction with the help of the Wild Canid Survival and Research Center near St. Louis. The mission of the Wolf Sanctuary is really twofold. It's captive breeding so that we can uh, create gene pools for release and then also educating the public about the animals so that those releases will be possible. These are Mexican gray wolves, a species that has disappeared from the U.S. wilderness. But the initial steps away from extinction happened at the sanctuary when the first Mexican gray pups were born here. So you look at them and you know that the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis are affecting their future. And you're, you're affecting not just the future of each individual animal, but that entire species. Beginning in March, prairie chickens in Missouri gathered to perform an age-old mating ritual. It's held during the early morning and evening hours on a high open area called a booming ground. Each male attempts to attract a female while defending their territory from other males. The male produces the unusual booming call as he sucks air into bright orange air sacs found on both sides of his neck. The booming draws in females. They watch as males charge each other, jump into the air, fight, stamp their feet, and display their colorful air sacs. Females presumably choose the most impressive male. The least terns are an endangered species that spend summers on the Mississippi and winters in the Caribbean. The birds lay a nest of one to five eggs in a slight depression they make in the sand or gravel. Historically, when the Mississippi River was its old self without all of our adjustments to it, why it ran its own course and new sandbars were created every year or torn apart every year. And so the least tern was really adapted to taking advantage of those new sand islands or new sandbars that arose every year. But with alterations made in the river for flood control and barge navigation, today's least tern finds a changed world. But is it changing too much? Biologists are examining this endangered bird, its diet, and its surroundings to see what it requires to survive and fledge young. 
It is the researchers hope that the knowledge they gain will influence future river management decisions so our rivers can provide islands of sand for this endangered bird. You've seen these really cool tight shots where a flower or a leaf really fills the frame? Well here's a tip. Anytime you get closer, the movement is more magnified and you get blur. So use a tripod or anything else you have on hand to support the camera. In other words, brace yourself. Speaking of bracing yourself, get ready. Here comes Ralph Duren with more nature knowledge. It's a lot of fun being able to identify animals and birds by their sounds, and you don't even have to be out in the woods to impress your friends. Lots of television shows and movies use the same sound when the scene is set in the wilderness. Do you know what that sound is? Is it an eagle? quail, a red-tailed hawk, or a turkey vulture. It's a red-tailed hawk. Most of the time, when you see a large bird of prey in a tree alongside the highway, it's a red tail. More pretty pictures coming up. We now return to more of Just Kidding Around. Wow, look at all this stuff. But do you really need all this equipment to take good pictures? No, when you do this for a living, you tend to accumulate a lot of stuff like this. But, but really, somebody can take really great pictures with just a simple camera like he has here. Now, what they need to understand is they need to be familiar with their camera and understand its limitations so that when they go out to take that picture and what they see with their eye, they need to understand what their camera is capable of so that they can transfer that vision that they see onto the film. And now for the conclusion of our shooting adventure. What we're going to do now, we've shot some trap and skeet and we're going to shoot some sporting clays. We'll go up here and see if we can't break some of them. You ready? Yeah. Full. All right, good job. That's kind of boring when you break them all. Ralph, he was really nice. He gave me a lot of helpful hints. Cool. Now there you're trying to aim the gun. And I wanna, I wanna try to show you something. All we gotta do is point it. Yeah! And after he did something, then usually cool. I could do it. Atta girl! First time, and then I forget it again. <laughs> But it, he was really great. Yeah. Hello, dead center. Five on that. All right. Let's stick one dead center. It's more fun than just shooting something going straight out. It's meant to simulate a real hunting experience. Hey, all right. Way to go, son. To me, this is a lot of fun. And I'll be with you guys anytime you want my time. Because it's young people like you who make this sport fun to be a part of. I could do it all day if I wanted to because it's, I like it a lot. Pull. It's something that I really enjoy. Leave that head on the stock. Pull. Hey, right there. Good job. The tallest state champion tree in Missouri is located at Big Oak Tree State Park near Sykeston. This pumpkin ash reaches a height of 133 feet. A close second, just one foot shorter, is this persimmon. It's also located in the state park. Trumpeter swans are pretty special because they're so few in number. There's less than a thousand free-flying trumpeter swans and all of those in the interior of North America are the results of the restoration efforts that have taken place in the upper Midwest. And for the last four or five years, we've been seeing swans show up in Missouri. Adult trumpeter swans will average just about 30 pounds, so they're much larger than any other species of waterfowl. They have about a seven-foot wingspan, so they're just huge. This is a pair of marked swans that we know were hatched in 1992 and were part of a restoration effort in the state of Minnesota by Minnesota DNR. We also know that because they're marked and people reported these 
uh, observations to us that this is the second winter in a row that they've wintered here in Missouri. The goal right now is to have a population of at least 2,000 trumpeter swans free flying by the year 2000. Right now we're less than half that, but they've been growing pretty well. So we want a self-sustaining breeding population of a couple thousand birds. There's nothing cuter than babes in the woods. Under the watchful eye of mother, they eat, grow, try their wings, and hide from predators. Of course in life there's danger, but often that danger is us. Every year, well-meaning people take home baby animals they think are abandoned. Don't do it. Mom is nearby, and if you take them home, they rarely survive. No matter how cute they are, let baby animals alone to grow up healthy and happy where they belong, in the wild. People tend to think shorebirds can only be seen near the ocean, but Missouri has shorebirds too. That's the killdeer, the most common shorebird we have here. You need to watch your step around this bird. They lay eggs right on the ground and have been known to nest in gravel parking lots, sandbars, even railroad beds. Their speckled eggs blend in and are very hard to see. Well, that's it for our show. And if you can, check out Missouri Outdoors for yourself. You may be surprised at what you might find. <laughs>